this guy, this Chinese guy told us that when KFC in the first like decade that KFC was in a, a China, yeah. you could take a girl on a date there. Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for clicking on that video, but before we show you the rest of it, I gotta tell you about this customized skincare system, Curology, that I've been using for the past few weeks. It's helped control my acne. If you have watched any of our videos, you can tell that I don't have the best skin. I wasn't born with the perfect skin genetics. I'm prone to acne, scarring. And that's why it's actually really important that you find the right skincare products for your skin because everybody's skin is different because everybody is different. So you go on the website, you can fill out a questionnaire that's gonna ask you about how oily your skin is, how many pimples do you have, and basically after you answer those questions, they're gonna come up with a specific formula for you and then they send it to you. So for example, you can get the whole three-step process right here, you have the cleanser, and you have the super bottle, which is actually the customized formula, and then you also get the moisturizer. This is like the triple threat package that I got, of course, because I, I need it. You know it's customized because you even have your own provider here. This is Megan Long. She's a PA. Here I have a uh, Tritinoin. Tritino tri Tritinoin. You get your cleanser, you get your super bottle which you put on, and then you put on the moisturizer to top it off. And, and just like I said, the things that are considered the best are not always the best for you because you need things personalized. If you're interested at all in Curology, click on the link down below. That is a unique link. If you click on it, you can actually get an entire month free and all you have to do is pay for shipping and handling. That's only about $4.95. So really $4.95, that's like a cup of coffee. Like that's not even lunch in most cities. It's a really small price to pay for a personalized formula that can transform your skin. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that and enjoy the rest of this video. Peace. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another international episode of Fun Gross Food. Today we are in Beijing, China with our Beijing friend, D Zhao. What up? But you're not from Beijing. <laughs> you grew up in the States, but you're from China. Now you're back in China. Yep. Basically, if you guys don't know, KFC is the number one fast food chain in all of China. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, this little, there's a, there's a, fa a thing that happened in the last couple of years that McDonald's in China was losing so much market share to KFC that all the McDonald's in China are actually not owned by McDonald's USA. They have to like back out of the country. So it's actually all the McDonald's are owned by a Chinese company called Golden Arch. Oh, that's why they don't call it Maidan though anymore. And they call it Jinggong Man. Jinggong, yeah. Yeah. They lost, they lost the battle of the KFC. I heard that KFC was the first one to enter the China market yeah. 30 years ago. And I gotta say, I'm not surprised that KFC is number one in China because I know when our grandparents, David, Mama Ye Ye, used to visit America, they used to always go to KFC. And it's funny because oh. we didn't even eat at KFC Yo, that that's much. crazy. And I it's heard it was, a, it was a prestige brand at one point. Like, yeah, I mean, it's considered like one of the first Western chains to come into China. The Colonel first is a very classy man. <laughs> I heard they made his eyes a little bit smaller to look more Asian. Is that true? I, I, you read that? I read it, but it's it's like people kind of have drawn that conclusion because he looks a little different than in the States. Are you ready? We're going to order everything off the menu at Kud. A K F K Yo, F we are KFC in China, aka Gun Deji, aka Kai Fung Tai. Let's go! Whew, okay, okay. I feel like we pretty much ordered everything here on the menu. At least one of everything. Yep, yep. We've ordered all the unique things. First off, should we go over these drinks? A peach oolong, very Chinese, a hawthorn tea juice, and, and a, a uh, grapefruit iced coffee. By the way, this coffee is really interesting. It's like a, it's like an iced coffee sweetened by like a uh, grapefruit sweetener. I actually thought that the addition of fruit in the coffee makes a lot of sense. It kind of gives it that burst of citrusness. Yeah. I can't say that it works with grapefruit in my opinion. I like some of the other mixtures at Starbucks. Well, David, maybe your taste buds just aren't that Chinese. KFC, KFC grilled, grilled chicken, chicken thigh. thigh. It almost tastes baked though. You know what's in here? It's like really Chinese flavors. There's like some. I think it's five spice. So, and it tastes like when mom and dad used to make chicken drumsticks. <laughs> All right, guys, I gotta try this the is rice. So nostalgic, bro. 
This just tastes like home. No, that rice is actually really good. Yeah. Okay. It's a sweet I was soy say it sauce. It looks like a teriyaki sauce. Almost. Not, not so much teriyaki, it's, it's a sweet soy. I give it a four out of five. Man, I think that was a strong one to start off with. I'm gonna roll with the, with a four out of five. I'm gonna give the chicken a four out of five. I'm gonna give the rice like a two out of five. Really? It's a little soggy, I like the sauce though. Pepper, Pepper chicken breast. I don't eat KFC a lot in China, but this is what I eat. Dude, I suppose there's some mara flavor on there. This is a, mm. this is a peppercorn. Yeah. Oh, let me try this sauce real quick. Uh, do you think the sweet and sour sauce in the Chinese KFC is more authentic? It's actually very similar to what we've been saying. This is a uh, sweet mm. and sour, but sour in the vinegar way. Oh! Like sweet vinegar sauce. Oh, wow. I'm definitely trying that one next. Uh, New Orleans, Orleans baked wing. wing. Let's see if it captures the flavor of gnaw. I actually really don't like this flavor. <laughs> uh, I know what you mean. I don't really like There's this. no flavor in this. It tastes uh, artificial. Honestly, honestly you know why people? I think people like it. No shade. It tastes like it came from the convenience store. It's like, kind of like soft, like the convenience store yeah. one. I'm not gonna lie. I think New Orleans, as a city, would I would, would be not offended. be happy. Would be offended about this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna tuck this chicken wing in an unknown corner of the table. Let's check out the uh, mashed potatoes real quick. This is, hey, and this ain't no different no matter what country you in. Ah, do you think the gravy's different? Essentially no, but a little bit. A little bit more water, a little bit more peppery, but essentially no. Original. Mm. What do you think, is, the, is it the original recipe? I feel like I'm back at home country buffet, man. Mm, no. It's very, I think that's the original recipe. What do you think it is? Why, why do you think they would decide to keep this one unchanged? I think it really is a testament to the genius behind the original recipe. Like how good the original recipe is. The original recipe, recipe, yeah, you can't go wrong. I mean, like, it's beloved by everybody. Tomato chicken egg panini Ooh. at KFC China, guys. Whoa. I'm trying to put a finger on it. I can't quite. Like, let, me, let me help you. Yeah. Not that good. It's not bad. It's a little bland. It, no, no, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just, I don't know, it's not doing much. You guys, I'm looking at a beef burger right here yeah. that looks, I'm not going to lie, just weird. <laughs> There's a piece of bacon on there too. The bacon in China always looks different. And it looks closer to like a Canadian bacon. Yeah, mm. European yeah. bacon, right? Yeah. Tastes like school lunch. So overall review, just would you get it again? I wouldn't, but if you made me eat it and that was the only thing around, I ain't gonna be mad. So you just said if you were starving, you would eat this. <laughs> Guys, I have this, dude, I, I swear I have three different sauces in this. Cause I have a uh, white sauce, which yeah. is like a gravy. Yeah, you gotta try some of that one. come on, man. I have, there, there, I have yeah, the yeah, Cajun sauce, the and then I have Pretty a barbecue sauce. Up. How's that blend? It's interesting, I like it. It's got a lot of stuff going on in there. It's got a lot of flavors. I'll tell you this, the chicken was slightly different, yeah. but not that different. Mm. The burgers, are significantly different. Peking, Peking duck, duck chicken, chicken tender. tender. I think immediately when you Google KFC China, I think this is the first thing that pops up. And obviously to Americans, they're like, what, they got Peking duck wraps at KFC China? Um, it's actually, it's pretty delicious from what I remember because the, it's the tian mian zhang that really makes this. Mm. Now tian mian zhang, you're talking about, it's a, it's a sweet sauce, but it's, it's not hoisin sauce. It's a sweet bean sauce. But it almost tastes like hoisin. Uh, it's, it looks very different than hoisin actually. Hoisin is kind of uh, savory. Yeah, this is just actually closer to just a sweet, sweet. sauce. Yeah. In Beijing, they love sweet food. Yeah. Is this close enough to it to maintain the culture? I think it's created an avenue of its own. Yeah. Right, you gotta eat this for this. I, don't, I think if you're craving vegan duck, I don't think people will come to get this. You know what I would compare this to? Is you know how a lot of people have kind of recreated bun mi's with the julienne carrots and the daikons and you gotta have those elements in there and then you can kind of stick whatever new fusion meat or like combination you want in there where you're taking like maybe 60% of the ingredients and the whole concept of it but you're just replacing the meat, the pancake, but you have cucumbers which gives you that nice crunch, you have the tian mian zhang which is the sweet sauce and it does kind of taste like it. We are down to our last two uh, dishes at KFC. Obviously, we have some sides that we're gonna get to. You know what's significant, Daniel, about these two dishes? Basically, McDonald's has exactly, and nobody knows who, who's came out first. McDonald's has an exact copy of this. McDonald's has an exact copy of this. Let's see how this matches up. New Orleans style chicken sandwich. Do you have a 
thoughts on this debate because they do have a, a similar sandwich at a similar price point. I've always thought this was a KFC thing, so yeah. I'm on the Have KFC you had thing. the McDonald's one? The McDonald's one is delicious. The McDonald's one, I've only had their McChicken, not their No, uh, their spicy chicken, chicken filet. Oh. This sandwich at McDonald's is the best sandwich on that entire menu, by far. That was pretty good, but my verdict is not better than McDonald's. That is more like an actual piece of chicken off of a chicken that just got shoved between two pieces of bread. The McDonald's chicken is much more of a patty. This was like really weird to eat, like the piece is like uh, thick in some places, you, thin in some It, it felt more natural. It did. It, it felt more, more natural. Are you reminded of that New Orleans wing that you just had like five minutes ago? Very plastic. The problem is that it has this like savory flavor, but you can't identify what it is. What, yeah. And that's why you associate it with something. I associate it with chemical? Yeah, something bad. Well, you know what? I actually had the New Orleans one from McDonald's. I didn't like it either. Yeah. So, you know what? They're both same in the way that I probably won't like them. So, as you guys know, can you you can get corn at the KFC in America, right? I think corn in the, K I the KFC in the sides. States is you get a cup of corn. You yeah. don't get a corn on the cob. Yeah, you don't get corn on the cob. Do you think it's buttered up? Do you think it's flavored? No, actually, that's the uh, that's, that's what's different about it. They actually just like the corn here, like right. boiled, okay. juicy. Mm. It's a little bit soft, oh, not considering one. it came out of the bag, I can't lie. That was much better than you expected. No right? shade to the ones at the convenience store. I would say that, that corn was a great palate cleanser. Yeah. Right. Guys, desserts. I think for me, I, I select red bean pie as my choice of weapon. Wow. It's really sweet. Oh. I did not expect it to be that beany. Oh, I gotta wow. give a 4.5 out of 5. Ooh. Here I have a uh, egg tart. I would say this resembles I, more of the Portuguese style. Exactly. I heard, exactly K, Portuguese. I heard KFC in China is actually famous for the egg tart. Oh, you hear that crunch? The crunch is pretty good. Huh? Wow. This dog tot is fire. This is really good. <laughs> like the, the crust is flaky, but it turns chewy and it's sweet and eggy. Would you Honestly. say it's, it's restaurant level? Like dim oh, sum level? I would say it's better than a lot of dim sum spots. I give that a five out of five. Like, All right, let's take a look at this, uh, this waffle. It's actually a pretty good imitation of a deleted waffle. The waffle, I'm not too much into the waffle because to be honest, there was no syrup, there was no whipped cream. All right, you guys, final thoughts on China's favorite fast food chain. Yeah, I mean, I, I think KFC China is interesting because they actually, like, there's a huge effort to try to make very gourmet items accessible on a fast food level. You were talking about like the Peking duck. Well, not just the Peking duck, but like an egg tart. Right, which Something is like normally you dim sum. see. I like a dim sum. Or a nice yeah. bakery. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at this box. I mean, it's clearly very shiny. Look, right, yeah. there's, unlimited. There's, like, what is that even supposed to mean? It's black. <laughs> it's gold. It's, it seems to uh, want to brand itself as a as a luxury fast food item, almost. When it comes to Western food items in China, there's no limit to how luxurious they can push it. Whereas in America, there's some sense of like, hey man, we're just blue collar people. Got some of the tastes are more built into identity. Yeah. Whereas here, upward mobility is the identity. There is no, I identify as a meat and taters type of person. I feel like people are like, I can move up. Let's do it. You know what I think captures the spirit of KFC here? Is the album cover for the single Bad and Bougie. It's this really hot girl sitting at this like high end restaurant with like silverware, China, and she's eating a cup of like top ramen. I feel like that album cover really captures the spirit of what KFC in China is trying to do. Like, they, they try to make something super uh, sort of fast foody into like some, like a luxurious item. Also, I do think that to be honest, there is a factor of this being a foreign food. At the end of the day, this is foreign food and will forever be foreign food in China, which kind of gives it more leeway to just do whatever it wants. Maybe. I, I think it's also related to uh, Chinese market behavior. There is a desire to want to spend money on items that represent luxury. What was your favorite item? I would say my favorite item was the Peking duck wrap. But I actually sleeper pick chicken thigh over rice. Yeah, that chicken thigh was pretty uh, yeah. surprising. So, surprising. I'll start with my sleeper pick was the Don Tot. Mm. Delicious. For actual food, it was it was actually the the Peking duck twister. I thought it had it had great contrasting elements to it. You know, I'm gonna go with uh, my classic pick. I, I think the peppercorn chicken fillet. Wow, low key. Yeah, that's almost like the most Chinese tasting thing, like yeah. purely Chinese no, 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 tasting no. thing. Because they distilled the flavor out of the Sichuan. Like, what is that called? Them peppercorn. This, yeah. this younger generation of 
Chinese kids in China, in, in China are gonna have not the same options, but in the big city and if they you know, have a little bit of money, they're gonna have a lot of the same options as the West. And so I think it's gonna go in a cycle. I think like in America, how there was the huge fast food boom in the 90s, and then it kind of turned more into the health wave, organic things like fast casual, that's kind of where it's headed. And then with the health craze, there's this whole like Howlin' Ray's spicy chicken sandwich wave, but but it's, it's like boutique yeah, fast food. It's more in moderation, like it's fried chicken still popping, but it's just in moderation. So it's funny to see fried chicken be so hipster in America now, but then fried chicken is still just like a staple of fast food and of everybody's life here. And uh, I think it's just gonna go in a cycle. I think you, you can kind of sense the health wave in China too, in the big cities. Yo guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave a comment down below and uh, leave a comment about which other fast food chains around Asia you guys want us to check out. I know uh, KFCs and McDonald's, they're all different in every country. So. You let us know which one's your favorite too. Everybody, thank you for watching that video and until next time, we are in Beijing. We out, peace. peace.